Hey guys, Curly Susie here from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. Welcome to my latest Q&A video. Yeah. The cool thing about this Q&A video is that it is part of a giveaway and so if you see your Instagram name or your question on screen, it means that you have won one of the beautiful Perfect Hair Care Microfiber Towels that I talk a lot about lately. This is not a paid sponsorship. This is a collaboration with the Perfect Hair Care. Um, I don't do a whole lot of these, but I really, really love this product and I really love the family that runs this company. So Tony and Bobby, if you are watching this, thank you so much for creating an amazing product and for giving me 26 of these beautiful microfiber towels to give away. So this is the towel right here. It's a microfiber towel that you can either use to squeeze excess water out of your hair or to plop your hair. And I'm going to demo how to do that at the end of the video. But this towel is like a, almost like a suede t-shirt material. That's the only way that I can describe it. It's very silky and soft. It really helps to eliminate frizz um, and it absorbs water very fast. So I find it does cut my drying time in half, especially if I'm pre drying a little bit before I diffuse my hair, I find that this is very, very effective. First question is from Foxy Oxy one It says, my hair has become wavy after I had my daughter. Have you experienced any hair changes postpartum? Um, they say that you have hair changes every, like approximately every seven years due to natural hormonal changes that happen with aging. Also things like menopause or having a baby, different things that cause hormonal changes, certain medications, um, changes in your health status, all of that can actually affect the, the texture of your hair. When I had my first son three years ago, the only real change that I experienced was that I had a lot of postpartum hair loss. I don't find that my hair pattern has changed at all. Um, I do find my hair is a little bit thicker right now and I'm hoping it stays that way because again, like I mentioned, um, after my first son was born, a lot of my hair fell out and it took a long time to grow back. What do you think is the biggest mistake wavies make during their journey to wavy curly hair? I actually was thinking about this the other day and it's not only wavies. I feel like this question is gonna take me a long time to answer but I'm going to try to keep it as concise as possible. I think one of the big mistakes that people make is that you focus too much on your hair type. So by hair type I mean if you have wavy hair, curly hair, or kinky or coily hair. So basically is your hair type two, type three, or type four? Um, that kind of categorizing system. I think people focus a little bit too much on that when they're choosing their techniques and their products. I'm just gonna give an example. Um, there's a lot of products that are made specifically for wavy hair. And there's a lot of products that are made specifically for curly hair and a lot of products that are marketed specifically towards kinky or coily hair. And I found that through trial and error, it is mixing a combination of all of those products that have given me the best results. So I use some things that are designed for waves, I use some things that are designed for curls, and I use some products that have been traditionally used by people who have type four or like an afro texture hair, and they work really well for me. So if I only used products that were marketed towards curly hair, that had somebody you know in the advertisement with the same hair pattern as me I would be selling myself short because I found products through all three categories that I really really like so try not to focus too much on your hair type when choosing products try to focus more on like your porosity um, if your hair is damaged chemically damaged and things like that and the types of ingredients that you find oh sorry Hank work really well for your hair here's another product related question it says how do you feel about mixing products from different lines or do you think it's better to buy a collection of products, shampoo, conditioner, stylers, like all from the same line? Generally, um, I wish that I could find products all from the same line that really worked for me all together. But normally, if I buy a line of products, I either really love the shampoo and dislike the conditioner, or I really like the conditioner and the shampoo is like too drying or something like that, or I don't like the styling product that comes with a particular shampoo and conditioner. I find it very hard to find a product line that I like every single product. It's just the way it is. So ideally, I would love to have a simplified routine where I just used you know, a certain line of products, but it just hasn't worked for me. And again, I think if you're only trying products from one line, you're kind of selling yourself short a little bit and it takes a little bit more trial and error than that. Um, the only thing that you want to maybe be careful of a little bit if you're using products from different lines is do they complement each other? So 
do the cleansers in the shampoo effectively remove all of the ingredients from the conditioner and the stylers? I just put him down for a nap and put lipstick on. <laughs> Next question. How do you get so much volume at your roots? I've tried everything and I just can't get the volume I like. Volume is actually, I think, my biggest issue now that I'm trying to have hair that has definition. So in order for me to get curl definition, I have to use products like creams and gels and things like that. And oftentimes for me to get the best definition, um, I have to let my hair air dry. And so all of those things together make it very hard for me to get volume at the roots, but I do sort of cheat it in a way. So there's a couple of things I do. Number one is I try not to put too much conditioner on my roots. And when I'm rinsing my hair, I rinse my roots really, really well. So that's something I kind of do in the shower. The other thing that I do is if I let my hair air dry or even after I diffuse my hair, I make sure that I put my fingertips in underneath my hair and kind of shake my roots out a little tiny bit and try to break up any kind of cast that's up there and lift them a little bit. Another thing that I do sometimes when I'm air drying is that I will, I don't really clip my roots like a lot of people do. I just take two or three claw clips and I kind of pile the top part of my hair up kind of like a snooky bump with the clips in it for a while while it's drying to create volume. And then another thing that I do is, um, so my natural part is on this side. When my hair is drying, I will part it on this side um, and that makes the hair lay sort of flat in this direction. And then once it's already dry, I sort of flip this part over, which gives this a little bit of volume. I mean, I don't have a ton of volume today. The last thing that I do to try to help with volume is that I do have layers in my hair right here. And that kind of creates a little bit of volume, but it's definitely like an everyday struggle for me. I find it easy to get my hair to be defined by using a ton of product, but if I use too much, then I really eliminate all of the volume I have. And so I'm still trying to find a balance. But if you try all of those things, I'm sure that some of that will work for you a little bit. And I hope that that answered your question. Do you finger coil your hair? Yes and no. I did make a video where I finger coiled my entire head of hair. And to be honest, I don't feel like it made a huge difference. And so for how long it took me to do that and how long I like to spend on my hair. I didn't think that it was worth it for me to finger coil all of my hair. If you have a tighter curl pattern, I think it'll work a lot better for you. I do finger coil these pieces. So my hair curls in this direction anyway, right here. And so a couple of times throughout the drying process, and I forget to show this a lot when I shoot my styling videos, but I constantly curled these pieces of hair with my finger. When I first started the curly girl method, I used to curl them with a curling iron because I found this area of my hair was like my kind of trouble area that would be really frizzy and kind of wonky and sometimes straight on this side. Um, but now I just use my finger and I find that that works really, really well. And I know what some of you guys are going to say. You're going to be like, what do you mean you use a curling iron? You all know that I'm curly girl method-ish. This one is a towel related question. What is the material of the towel? I'm scared to use anything other than a t-shirt. Also, what is your best frizz reducing technique for amazing day two hair that is a tiny bit frizzy or less defined? So the first of all, I don't know why you would be afraid not to use a t-shirt. I kind of know what you're saying because once I started using a t-shirt and I realized how much it helped with frizz reduction, I kind of never went back. So when I first started the curly girl method, I used a regular towel still because I was thinking, you know, how much difference can a towel make? And then I switched to a t-shirt and I couldn't believe the difference. And then I always used a t-shirt. I used a t-shirt in all of my videos. And I actually used a t-shirt every single time I dried my hair with the exception of trying a few different microfiber towels for short periods of time um, until I was sent this towel. So these towels were gifted to me by the Perfect Hair Care. They sat on my shelf for a long time because like you, I was a little bit skeptical and I was kind of like, you know, what's the big deal? It's a towel until I tried it. And I find that the frizz reduction is definitely even better than a t-shirt and it absorbs water really fast. The other thing that I like about this versus a t-shirt is that if you wear it in the turban style, which I'll show you at the end of the video because that's one of the other questions, um, it does not slip off your head. So I only plop when I have to multitask. 
Otherwise, I just kind of squeeze excess water out of my hair. But if I use this to plop because I'm busy in the morning before I actually get ready for the day or finish getting ready, um, I use the turban technique and I use this little toggle system that they have and the towel really stays on my head, so I really like that. As far as the material goes, it's microfiber, so it's like 85% or 80% polyester and 20% of some other type of synthetic polyfiber but it creates like a very silky, smooth t-shirt material. Um, and I absolutely love these. I have this in black and pink. My pink one, I used after I at home colored my hair and I ruined it. <laughs> so I'm not even gonna show it on camera, but I still use it on a regular basis. You don't have to take my word for it because I'm sending you a towel. If you are watching this video and you don't win the towel, you can purchase one by following the link in my description box below or heading over to the Perfect Hair Care Instagram for more information or their website. I feel like the best thing to do for second day hair is not to do too much to it. So unless you are going to completely wet your hair and go through the entire styling process, I really like using a gentle, gentle mist of water to not disrupt the curl that you already have. Um, and using mousse. So what I do is I spritz my hair with water very quickly. I'm going to leave a link to a video right here actually where I show exactly how I do that. And then I scrunch mousse into my hair and then I um, diffuse and scrunch my hair which is kind of against what most people say. Uh, but when I refresh I definitely scrunch and touch my hair as I'm diffusing and that gives me my best result. If that still doesn't turn out great I do like a cute hairstyle so I'll pin you know, part of my hair up and do like a half up and half down kind of style or put my hair in a cute ponytail. Um, and that is how I work with my day two hair that's a little fluffier and a little frizzier. Next question, do you find that you know if you like or dislike a product after single use or do you have to use it mul multiple times? And how do you know if the product isn't right for your hair versus changing the application process that you were using? So I don't really change my application process anymore because I've been doing this so long that I've really tried every different type of application process that you can try. Every influencer or YouTuber who has a video about how to apply products to your hair, I have watched it and I have tried it and I have found the technique that works the best for me. So that kind of eliminates that whole variable. Um, as far as products go, I usually know after my very first use if I don't like it, but sometimes the first time I use something, it works really well. And then after using it for a week or two weeks, it kind of doesn't work well anymore. And then I don't repurchase it. So I hope that answers your question. But um, usually after the first time, I have a good idea. I can actually tell sometimes in the shower, especially with conditioner, just by the texture of it and the way it slides through my hair. But a lot of that is because I've been trying so many products um, and I've used a lot of trial and error. Um, so yeah, so that's the answer to that question and sending you a towel. Next question, this says, do you have any answers on how to give yourself a decent haircut at home with some dodgy scissors? <laughs> um, I don't know if you know this, but I've actually done that and filmed it. And I'll leave a link to that horrifying video right here. I gave myself a haircut at home and did a terrible job not that long ago. And so I don't really have a whole lot of advice. I don't think there's anything wrong with cutting your hair at home. And for some of us, going out and spending $100 at a salon just isn't an option. Or maybe you just prefer to cut your own hair. I think my only advice that I can properly give is that you should try to use scissors that are as sharp as possible. Oh my god, these scissors are so sharp. I'm going to leave a link to a video by another YouTuber, Mains by Mel. She's another Canadian YouTuber who I really like, and she is a professional stylist. And she has a great video with all kinds of really good information in that. So I can't really answer that question well enough, I don't think, to answer it. But it was one of the questions that I selected. So I'm going to link her video here for anybody who wants to watch it and... Um, you are the winner of one of the towels. I'm realizing now as I answer these questions that if I answer all 26 questions, this video is going to be way too long and nobody is going to want to watch it. So if I don't make it through all the questions, the rest of the winners, I will link your name and the question and my answer in the description box and all of you will be notified on Instagram. So please, in the next day or so, make sure that you check your inbox because we're going to need to get some information from you guys so that we can send you the towels. What is your favorite go-to refresh routine for when you don't have time? 
I use mousse and a little bit of water from the tap and I just kind of refresh the outside of my hair very quickly and I talk about that and show some of that in a video that I just posted um, but I find mousse works the best when you're in a rush because it dries very very quickly and you only need a little tiny bit of water because mousse has a whole lot of water uh, built right into it so that's my favorite quick refresh I just tip my head upside down put water in my hands kind of dampen my hair very quickly and haphazardly and then use probably two golf ball sized amounts of mousse put that into my hair scrunch it and let it air dry and that is my quick routine this is a good question it says I can never seem to get the front of my hair my part styled right I end up pinning it back a lot how do you style your part so I find this very hard and you guys if you watch my videos you will notice that a lot of time this hair is too much in the front of my face it has taken me a very long time to train my hair to sort of part here and so if your part is kind of wonky keep working with it and over time your hair will start to naturally fall where you want it to fall so that's kind of one of my tips is to be persistent the other thing that is crucial is that when you have your hair trimmed and cut by a stylist make sure that your hair is parted the way that you want it to part when you style it otherwise um, the shape of the hair when it dries may not be the shape that you want so make sure that your hair works well with the part the other thing that I do is I do finger coil these pieces often so I have trained this section of my hair to curl in one giant clump and I continue to do that if you are finger coiling your hair or using a wand or something like that just to kind of accentuate the natural pattern of your hair make sure you are going in the direction that the hair already wants to wave or curl otherwise you are fighting against the curl pattern and your hair won't naturally you know curl as well when you eventually want to have like a wash and go style this is a YouTube related question I have a couple of these that I'm going to answer because I just feel so passionate about having this YouTube channel and I really want to help any of you that are watching this that want to start your own channels um, so this question says thank you for this opportunity my question is I remember you saying when you first started YouTube you just use your phone but is there anything that you would recommend a first timer just getting started wanting to start a channel to do something with my time but I'm not really sure about how to make videos on an Android phone working on it though thank you love your channel um, I think it is very smart to start with your phone I got my first 50,000 subscribers with videos that I just made on my iPhone and my iPhone at the time was an iPhone 6 which is not you know the newest best camera in an iPhone and I shot all my videos with my phone facing me this way so that I could see myself on screen they say you get a much better picture if you shoot it the other way but then I would have to hook up a monitor and all that so it depends on how much your video quality matters to you and how much money you're willing to spend on accessories but basically if you have an iPhone that is an 8 or newer or something equivalent made by Samsung or one of the other good brands your video quality now will probably be as good or better than the video quality that I'm creating right now using my Canon G7X the new phones are amazing and actually the audio inputs in the newer phones are really good too that is my biggest issue with my channel is poor audio because the camera that I'm shooting in now doesn't have a great audio input and you can't hook up a microphone to it if you are going to spend any money at all um, I highly recommend buying lighting so I'm using two softbox lights right now they cost about $90 on Amazon and seriously you can make a $300 camera look like a $3,000 camera with just cheap lights it really makes a big difference and then you can shoot anywhere you want to in your house I used to have to shoot in front of a big window and if the weather changed at all or if the Sun went behind clouds or anything like that it would make the lighting in my videos look really like uneven and I could only shoot during certain times of the day so if you're gonna buy anything that's what I'm saying use your phone and buy some softbox lighting and all of the editing software that I used right up until you know about six months ago was free software that you can get online so I used a free version of iMovie I use free versions of Canva and other you know websites like that in order to make my thumbnails I just try to spend as little money 
as possible and just be as creative as possible. I am investing in a new camera very shortly, but it's not because I'm unhappy with the video quality, like the image quality, it's because I'm very unhappy with the audio quality. And so I would like something not necessarily better or more expensive than my phone or my camera, but just something that I can hook up an external microphone to. So that was a really long answer, but I hope it helps. And if you have any more specific questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I can't even find this question and I will find it so that I know who the winner is. But somebody asked me how I set up my camera for shots when I'm in the shower. My tutorials where I have to be in the shower are definitely not the best. And the reason is because I don't really have a good setup. My tripod only goes up to this height. So it's good for when you're seated unless you're really far away. And so what I do is I stand my tripod up on my toilet and I have to leave the shower curtain open. I put towels on the floor and the water from the shower gets all over the floor. Like it's a complete disaster, but that's really the only way that I can, you know, have myself in the shower on camera for you guys. I'm sure there's something that you can buy out there or a better system, but I just haven't really invested in anything like that yet. So hopefully that's something that I can do a little bit better in the future. Do you have any trouble with the glycerin in the BioTerra gel you love from Sally? I've been wanting to try it, but summer is coming and I'm not sure. I have never had a problem with glycerin in any products. So I definitely don't have a problem with the glycerin in the BioTerra gel from Sally. I hear my family coming in right now and so I'm going to have to wrap this video up. Oh, here's the other kiddo. Do you have chocolate on your face and hands? So I had a brownie pizza. Was it good? Yeah. Do you like mommy's hair today? Yeah. What do you think? Do you think it looks good? Yeah. <laughs> Wilson's going to help with the demo. So someone asked how to use this towel to create the turban style. And basically you just hold it up so that the logo is away from you or facing you. It doesn't really matter. And that the toggle is exposed. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, just wait one second. So that's going to go at the nape of your neck. Why are you putting that on your head? Because I'm just going to show them how to use it. Thank you to everybody who participated in the giveaway. I hope you liked this video and that it was entertaining. You can give it a thumbs up if you liked it and a big old thumbs down if you didn't like it. If you didn't win your own perfect hair care towel, please check out all the information in the description box about how you can order one for yourself. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.